Hi guys, welcome in and or welcome back to my channel, Home of Christy T. I'm Christy T and today I'm excited to be sharing two Daiso beginner friendly DIYs with you. So let's go ahead and get into it. So guys, if you do live in the States, then obviously you have access to a Dollar Tree, which is now $1.25 and more or whatever, but that is okay. But we do live here in Japan and our version of the Dollar Tree is Daiso and or Surya, which I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. but. Daiso or Saria are your options for dollar plus items that you can use in your home that are fairly decent price, like 100 yen, which is dollar US um, for your home. But they have a lot of storage options and even things just you can use around your home for crafting or anything you can pretty much honestly imagine. So the items that I'm showing you guys today are strictly 100% from Daiso. Everything you can purchase from there and it's super easy. If you would like, I will be leaving some links from Amazon products that are similar if you wanted to do this DIY and you're in the States and you don't have access to a Daiso. But for the most part, everything like I said, if you're in Japan, just go to Daiso. Just go to Daiso, like, <laughs> I, I can't make it any simpler than that. So everything, like I said, will be from Daiso and I will be leaving everything linked down below. Um, you'll be seeing pictures of what it looks like from the original packaging or whatever, um, so that you can know what to look for in the store. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and get into this first project. All right guys, so this first project that I want to share with you is one that I've honestly already kind of done before and I can't remember if I shared the full DIY of me doing the project or if I had just shared the end final project with you guys. I know for sure if I did, it was in my fall updates video which I'll leave linked here um, if it's in there. Um, but I'll show you guys what that looks like because there were two problems that really just kind of stood out with this project that were like, okay, it's cute but it doesn't function well. So let me show it to you. So this is the original project. Um, I'll insert a picture of the inspo photo here, but this is the original one that I created from um, a DIY from, these are plastic items from Sevilla. Now the main problems with this is because this is a plastic bowl, this is a plastic cup. Okay, that's fine. If you're just using this for aesthetic purposes, that's fine. Um, but if you're going to use this for like actually putting things in, say for instance, you want to put a candle in here, it's not flame retardant, so that's a huge issue. But the real problem that I'm having with this one itself, which don't get me wrong, I'm still gonna be using this in my house, um, is that I covered it in the baking soda and acrylic paint method to like give it texture and just kind of make it look more like the inspo photos um, is that number one it gets dusty okay so obviously I have this sitting on a shelf somewhere dust collects how do you clean this how do you clean it like you can you guys can see inside which you'll see the second problem which is here but you can see like it's really dusty inside and like there's no way to like clean it out without like destroying the paint itself that's on the inside so durability wise I can't just like toss stuff in here either like because if my keys scratch it up or whatever else I put in here scratches it up it is what it is which you know it was only like 200 yen which is like two dollars um, to make the project itself but once again I didn't make it to destroy it so the second problem with this, and I'm not sure if it's the second that I'm saying, but <laughs> anywho, the second other option um, problem with this is that because of the paint method that I use, the baking soda and paint method, which it works for a lot of things, but it got the job done, but not in the best way. Because as you guys can see, this right here, I hope it's focusing, is a crack in the paint. And I haven't put anything heavy in here. Um, I've, I think I've kept like seashells in here before, but I usually just let it sit on the um, shelf or the counter or wherever I'm putting it at the moment. But something happened with the adhesion of the paint and the plastic of the bowl that caused it to separate. Um, so it has like, the, it had this giant bubble in there that just eventually. All right, so guys, for this project, you will just need three things. And then the fourth item is optional, which is paint if you decide to paint this. But you'll just be needing this larger bowl from Daiso and the smaller bowl from Daiso. And then you'll also be needing this adhesive glue, which is perfect for ceramics. I picked up the one that it says it is for ceramic 
products. They do have different kinds of plastic or wood or metal or anything like this, but this will definitely set it set it for ceramics. So make sure you're picking up the right one. This was only 100 yen, which is about a dollar US, and this is gonna be perfect for our project. So guys, like I mentioned before, I will not be painting this bowl because I really like the color of it by itself. So the first thing you're gonna do is just go ahead and flip your larger bowl over. I found this to be the easiest method to make sure that it was perfectly aligned. And you're gonna take your smaller bowl and place it on top. Um, obviously just play with it first to make sure you can get the desired alignment that you need for your project before applying the glue. Um, my glue is sitting on my desk but it's not open yet but you're just going to go ahead and line it up and then we can go ahead and move to the next step. So guys moving right on along next once we have our perfect alignment we are going to go ahead and get our adhesive glue opened up. So guys with using this glue I highly recommend you be careful you do not want to get this glue on your fingers so if you feel like you can't um, properly attach it without getting it on your fingers I highly recommend you use gloves um, because I just really hate that feeling of super glue on my fingers but we're going to go ahead and just kind of squeeze it out I really like this because it is the gel type um, so it's just kind of kind of stay in place instead of just kind of running everywhere which is perfect but we're going to just go ahead and use that around the beveled edge of this smaller bowl and then we're going to place that on top of our larger bowl, well, on the bottom portion of the larger bowl because we have it flipped over, obviously. Um, but then we're gonna go ahead and place it on the bottom and then move on to our next step. So one of the last features that I really love about this glue is that once you place it on, you do have a little bit of wiggle room time to adjust as needed. But the final step of this project, honestly, for me was to just place something heavy on it to make sure that that bond is nice and secure. And this is the final project. Alright guys, so before we move on to project number two, please don't forget that if you are liking this kind of content, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button down below so that we can continue to grow this family. We are trying to grow this channel to a thousand plus. We're trying to go past a thousand subscribers, let's be honest. But for now, we're just trying to reach a thousand subscribers. So please don't forget that like and subscribe button and even share it with your friends and let's go on to project number two. All right guys, so like I said, all of these projects are inspired by items that I found while shopping online. And this one specific specifically, I found while shopping on Amazon. And then when I was in the store the other day, I saw this piece and it just kind of clicked that like, oh wow, this could work for a DIY. So I'm hoping, because I'm recording this before I even do the DIYs. So I'm hoping it turns out well. Um, it's gonna be a cool dupe if it does. And if I can manage to like get this to work, I plan to do it on a larger scale in my home somewhere else. So let's just see how this turns out. I'm super excited because it's like, you could really do so much with this project. So this is the inspiration photo of what it looks like. And then let's roll the clip of me creating this DIY for you guys. All right guys, for the second DIY, you will need this towel rod, which is measuring 60 centimeters in length. This is the longest one they have available, but they do have other size options as well. So this is the second item you will be needing for this project, which are these warm white tape lights. Once again, this is from Daiso. I paid 330 yen. I picked up the warm white color, and these are measuring one meter. Additionally, guys, you can choose to use adhesive glue, but you will also need scissors for this project, which I did not show. All right, so guys, we're going to go ahead and open this. Obviously, you don't have to be fancy with it. So once you have this open, the next step you want to do is get these end caps popped off. This is just going to be able to allow this little sliding mechanism to slide off the pole itself. So guys, once again, if you want to spray paint this in a different color, this is the perfect time to do so before you attach your lights or anything else. 
Optionally, I was going to do this in black, but I decided to leave it white just to show you guys how to do this DIY. But if I do decide to make a bigger version for my home, I will be spray painting it black to fit with my decor style. So once you have everything disassembled, you will see that you have two of these sliding mechanisms. For this project, we will only be needing one, so you can really save this if you decide to do another one with a just purchasing the bowl by itself. So I will just be doing that, like I said, if I want to do a bigger one in my home, I'm going to probably save this mechanism to do that for that project. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to the second step of this project, which is using our strip lights that we picked up from Daiso. So there were pros and cons to using these strip lights. One pro is that they have the USB connector which means that you can easily attach it to um, either like a port um, that you can plug into the wall or you can attach it to a battery pack like you use to charge your phone. So the con for this is that this cord is very short so with the pro of it being a USB connection I highly recommend just using a battery pack depending on where you decide to place this in your home but if you wanted to do a bigger version of this project I would say order some LED strip lights from Amazon or something then you could probably end up with a longer cord for attachment. So here guys is where I wanted to just test and make sure that my lights worked prior to attachment to my pole and as you can see I am plugging them into a phone battery pack and obviously I have to turn it on to make it work but as you can see they work so now we can go ahead and move on to the next step. So the perfect thing about using LED strips is that they usually have an adhesive on the back which is a sticky adhesive and then also for the mere fact is that you can also cut them according to your desired length. As you can see, my camera was struggling to focus on where I was trying to show you guys, but you can see here on the copper colored areas, there's like a little small pair of scissors which is indicating that you can cut at those increments. So pro tip guys, I highly recommend using a pencil to go ahead and mark off on your PVC pipe slash towel hanger uh, where you want your wire to end because once you cut your LED strip, you will not be able to use the cut portion any longer. It won't be able to connect to the lights. So just kind of a double check to make sure that everything is going to line up perfectly. You can go ahead and do that before cutting. Words to live by are to measure twice, cut once. Highly recommend that. So as you can see here, I am measuring once again, now up against the line that I just drew my pencil prior to cutting. And I'm just going to make sure that I have the exact length that I want. And I decided to do a little overhang cut, but as you'll see in a few seconds, I decided to cut that little extra overhang off in the end because it really did not add any extra to the design itself. Finally, so in the preparation stage, scissors, you're going to go ahead and cut, cut your LED cutting. strips according to your desired length. And then we can move on to the fun part, which is assembling your new DIY light. So, we cut off the so guys, as I mentioned before, these LED strip lights do have an adhesive backing on the back. Now you can either use this to attach your lights to your pole, or if you'd like a more permanent solution, you could use that same adhesive glue we used earlier for our first project to attach your lights to your pole. I myself, I'm just going to use the adhesive backing for now to attach it to here. If I have any issues with it in the future, I will go back and add that adhesive glue. But for now, I think the adhesive tape will be fine. So guys, for this portion, I highly recommend taking your time to just make sure everything is lined up correctly. You want this strip of lights to be as straight and in the straightest line as possible because of how it will line up on the wall. You don't want to be able to see your strip lights from the viewing point of your new light. Once you have stuck in the last one, you can go ahead and do the assembly back, put all of the sliding mechanisms back on. Now for this portion, I was struggling with trying to get this silicone cup to stick to my wall. So what I would recommend is that you either use some form of command strip or double sided tape to attach it to your wall and attach it that way. Um, unfortunately, there I haven't come up with a solution to hide the cord itself, but I didn't think it looked too bad. So here is how it turned out.
So guys, as you can see, those DIYs turned out so cool and like look, gonna look really great in my home style wherever I decide to put them. But that is gonna be all for today's video, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed these DIYs. Comment down below if you would've done anything differently or if you've done any Daiso or Dollar Tree DIYs, comment down below or share them over on Instagram with me at home of Chris DT. I would love to see them and hopefully recreate some of them over on my channel so that we can share those projects with other people as well. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!